This is Don Komarechka here for DP Review TV. I am known uh, for my work with snowflakes internationally. It's a subject that is universally beautiful in the winter weather, but this is the first occasion that I've had where it's snowing outside and I've got somebody to film me doing this work. So let's dive in. I will share all of my secrets on how to photograph snowflakes. So here we are, it is snowing, it's actively snowing and that's important because if the snow has been sitting around for a while, it's not gonna be as pretty, it's not gonna be as pristine, it will evaporate back into thin air. So you need to get this as fresh as possible. The background is a black mitten. Now it's always been the tradition of me shooting that way. You can use whatever you want, but it gives me high contrast and it acts as an insulator to prevent the snowflakes from melting when we're close to the freezing point like we are right now. Now the snowflakes are falling onto the mitten fibers and I have a small paintbrush in my hand. I'll use it to clear off a particular snowflake, uh, isolating it from the debris that's also falling around it and making sure that it's on the right angle to the camera to get a nice surface reflection. Now, if you are to be looking at a snowflake, uh, through the viewfinder, it's gonna be really hard to find it. In the same way that looking through the viewfinder with a telephoto lens to find a bird on a cloudless blue sky, it's gonna be really hard to find your frame of reference. So I take the brush, uh, the handle of the brush will point directly to where, uh, towards where the snowflake is, and we will use that as a reference point to guide our camera exactly to where it needs to be. Now it's a common misconception that you have to be buttoned down on a tripod with a focusing rail at these magnifications. With a snowflake, in order to get the right angle for surface reflection, you have to have the camera rotating around the snowflake as the center of rotation, taking test shots to see exactly when that angle comes in, creating that glare off of a window effect off the surface of the snowflake, which really makes them sparkle. It's almost impossible to do that on a tripod because the snowflake will melt or sublimate or it'll blow away before you're ready. So timing is everything to make this work and by hand holding the camera holding the end of the lens with um, or the end of the ring flash in this case with my left hand resting that hand against the surface that I'm photographing on acts as an anchor almost like a monopod and I can freely move the camera with an anchor keeping that subject within the frame the entire time. Uh, the lens that I'm using here is an oldie but a goodie. It's the Canon MPE 65mm. It gets to 5 to 1 magnification, which on a full frame camera gets you into snowflake realm. I've added extension tubes on that as well, which pushes me closer to 6 to 1 magnification so that I can fill the frame with even the smallest snowflakes. I'm also using a ring flash. This is the Yongnuo YN14EX2 about $124 US. Uh, it's a great ring flash. In fact, it's one of the best on the market and you could use it on any camera so long as you're using it in a manual exposure mode. I have a battery pack that's stuck in my pocket here to give me extra juice so that when I'm firing off a rapid fire burst, continuous shooting, I don't have any dark frames. The flash will keep up with me. You need to shoot as many frames as possible of a snowflake, especially if you're on an angle to get surface reflection off of the front of the crystal. Uh, the average number of frames that I'll take is 200, maybe 300 frames of a snowflake, and I'll combine about 40 of them together to get a focus stack completely in focus from front to back. This equipment that I'm holding right here is relatively expensive, but I can get away with a lot less. I have a Micro Four Thirds camera here. This is the Lumix GX9. Uh, it retails for about $800 right now, and the lens on here is the Venus Optics Liowa 25mm 2.5 to 5 times macro lens. The combination here of camera body 800 lens being about $400, you might already have a camera that is capable of this lens. So for a few hundred dollars, plus a ring flash that I have uh, kind of MacGyvered onto the camera with gaffer's tape because it doesn't have a filter thread, uh, it still works and it's going to get the job done uh, on a budget and the images are still going to be phenomenal. So now we are here in post-processing. We've got some snowflake images that were taken outside earlier today. Uh, this one with the Lumix S1R. Uh, zooming in, the detail is phenomenal. It has this beautiful detailed center, almost flower-like uh, in its design. And it's the middle of winter time. I don't mind thinking about flowers in springtime, but you'll notice that the depth of field is razor, razor thin. We have one more as well. It was shot with the Lumix GX9. This is a bit of an oddball snowflake in its design, uh, but I think it'll still work nicely. And the quality is stand up compared to the other one. It's a 20 megapixel camera versus 47, but there's still a lot to work with. We're gonna go through the editing process on these images. I don't intend for you to follow along. This is going to be a, a rapid sequence of me editing a snowflake, just so that you can see how we go from here to the finished product. I've done videos on this process. Maybe we could put a link to one of those uh, in the show notes here for you to follow along with. And I've also published a book that details exhaustively the entire process for editing these snowflake images. So you can check that out as well. 
Uh, but at the very least, now you see the entire process, soup to nuts. There's nothing secretive about how you photograph a snowflake. You just have to be out in the freezing cold, and photograph it slice by slice. Uh, if you want to find out more about this work, uh, you can follow me on social media, on Instagram and on Twitter. Uh, you'll see a lot of this work, especially in the wintertime. I publish almost daily a Snowflake series. Uh, of course, check out DP Review TV, where you can find more of videos like this, plus videos from Chris and Jordan, which I've done a number of with as well. And you can also find me uh, on my podcast at photogeekweekly.com. So check us out everywhere you can, and thank you so much for enjoying this video. If you like what you see, if you like what you hear, please leave us comments. Let us know what we can do better and how we can do more of these to your liking. One final project you can consider with snowflakes is actually preserving them on microscope slides or these little glass squares designed for beading. It's a simpler process than you might think. All you have to do is take super glue. Anything that has cyanoacrylate as the active ingredient, which is most super glue, will freeze at around minus 20 degrees Celsius. And that becomes a liquid that will put on top of the snowflake, but it won't melt the snow because it's still below the freezing point of water. Once it cures, then you end up with a snowflake fossil that you can take inside and it's preserved forever.